Are you excited by all of Diablo 4's rave reviews and want to jump into one of the games of the year? But maybe you have no idea where to start. We've got you covered. Here's a breakdown of all the classes, gameplay and absolutely essential tips before you jump down into hell itself. We're going to cover the five classes available at launch first, so if this is something you've already made your mind upon, feel free to skip ahead to our next section about weapon power. But if you fancy learning a little bit about the classes ahead of the big decision, let's get into it. It's worth noting that you can indeed run multiple characters in Diablo 4, so if you feel like you're not gelling with your first pick, just try a different one. As for the classes themselves, we've got rogues, barbarians, sorcerers, druids and necromancers to tempt you. The differences between each class include unique skill trees, class exclusive quests, access to different weapons and of course the obvious cosmetic differences. You won't however be locked out of any story critical quests or endgame activities. And although the class names tell you quite a lot about how each one plays, let's just gloss over the Fearsome 5 quickly to help you find one that helps fulfill your ultimate Diablo 4 power fantasy. But like I said, if you're already sure, you can always skip ahead to here. Sorcerers are the go-to class for ranged elemental magic wielders. They're a great all-rounder and can wield the power of fire, frost and lightning to decimate large groups of enemies in an instant. Managing your mana resources, that's the blue orb here, is key to giving sorcerers as much opportunity to unleash their abilities on the minions of darkness, which is as simple as keeping up your basic attacks in between triggering your other abilities. It's a simple class with a simple goal, obliterating anything that moves with a flick of a wrist. Barbarians, on the other hand, are the polar opposite of the fantastical sorcerer. You've got bulging muscles, big weapons, and an unquenchable rage. Well, unquenchable, so long as you keep your fury resource topped up. Barb attacks all stem from your pool of fury that is available. But what's really cool is that you can equip up to four weapons, more than any other class, and assign them to which abilities you want to use. This deep mechanic unlocks some devastating potential for up-close melee destruction. If hulking out sounds like your idea of fun, give the Barbarian a spin. Splitting the middle between the Sorcerer and the Barbarian is our Rogue class. They add a dash of stealth into the mix, alongside the ability to wield both ranged and melee approaches. This is a class for players who value mobility high on their list of priorities. Rogues have the most diversity when it comes to damage types, with four at their disposal. Physical, Poison, Shadow and Cold all combine to give you a highly effective damage dealer, if a bit squishy. For something similarly diverse but decidedly more bulky, give the Druid class a look. You'll be sacrificing a lot of mobility, but in return you'll receive some of the best crowd control and up close abilities in the game. Druids can shapeshift into tanking specialists by way of the Werebear skill line, but also boast a modest selection of lightning spells for those moments you're feeling less than beastly. Okay, so druids have a handle on all things natural, but for those of you with unnatural tendencies, the necromancer will satisfy your slightly questionable urges. No judgement here, darlings. This class can raise minions from the dead to fight on their behalf, but also come equipped to dish out damage with the very appropriate class exclusive weapon, a scythe. Later in the game, you'll be able to specialise into bone, blood, darkness or corruption magics, offering an even more personalised way to put people into an early grave and then maybe even wake them up afterwards to give you a hand. Now this is all well and good, but what will your freshly rolled character actually be doing in Diablo 4? As one of the granddaddies of the role playing game genre, there are a lot of concepts and gameplay loops you'll probably already be familiar with, but let's cover the basics so you can get familiar with how best to play ahead of launch. Diablo 4 boasts a lengthy campaign that will offer you an abundance of quests, side missions, dungeons and more to earn XP, loot and various cosmetic items from. Loot scales with the level at which it drops, meaning as you reach higher and higher levels, the weapons, armour and jewellery you'll receive will become stronger and more suited for higher level activities. As for your character's abilities, these are unlocked via the skill tree, with one experience point earned per level up. There are other ways to earn experience points, but the vast majority will come your way via leveling up. 
Spending an experience point unlocks a node along the skill tree. If it's a major node, it will likely add an ability for you to slot into your ability bar, making it available for use during combat. Minor nodes often enhance the abilities they are attached to, only unlocking once a major node has been purchased first. On major nodes, you can often increase their potency by investing more and more skill points into them. So pay attention to see if you want to upgrade a pre-existing ability over getting another new one. These all come in very handy when fighting the swarms of mobs that you'll come across in the overworld, as well as hefty bosses within dungeons and story beats too. All in all, the more you level, the better your gear, abilities, and your understanding of your class will become. But enough of that, here are some tips that we came across as we played the game ourselves during an early preview that was provided by Blizzard. It's easy to become attached to a particular weapon if it got you through a particularly tough stretch of the game or slayed an especially diabolical boss. But there's no room for sentiment in these dungeons, so be prepared to chuck whatever you're wielding away when something better comes along. Pouring gold into upgrading your favorite weapon isn't an economic way to use your resources, since the cost is high and you're likely to find more powerful gear as you explore anyway, so be prepared to keep on switching it up. You want to keep your inventory lean and mean, so salvage any extra gear that has the pickaxe symbol next to it and sell the rest. Once you start finding proper endgame gear, it's worth hitting the options menu to turn on advanced tooltip information and advanced tooltip compare. These will provide you with deeper insight into the maximum potential stats that any given bit of gear has rolled. So you can avoid pouring more gold into pieces that have rolled poorly. And with the way prices skyrocket as you level up, you'll be thanking me to have introduced you to this savvy shopping tool. Diablo 4 tells a tale about angels, demons, and the war between them and the poor humans caught in the middle of it. It's all very cool, very metal stuff, and so it can be tempting to barrel ahead with the story missions straight away, but it's best not to. Focusing on dungeons and events is a more effective way to farm XP, while the chests and the gear rewards will provide you with some way better kit. Not only will all of this make you more powerful, but will help you to really sculpt your character's build to match the way that you want to play. There are particular quests you'll definitely want to hit as early as possible too. The class specialization ones are vital for unlocking the mechanics that let you get the most out of your chosen class, helping to make you a more barbaric barbarian, a more roguish rogue or druid who is better. You should also keep an eye out for quests that introduce you to basic mechanics like crafting, upgrading and alchemy. They are marked in your journal as priority quests and that is exactly how you should treat them. Finally, be sure to check your progress in each region to see what activities you've yet to complete because polishing these off can grant you massive gold rewards as well as rare materials to improve your gear with. When it comes time to upgrade your character's skills, it's important to make sure that you've got a good defensive ability on the go. Sure, the offensive abilities are where the real fun stuff is, but Diablo 4 is an easy game to get overwhelmed in, especially if you're taking on the horde by yourself, so you'll want something that provides you with a good get out of jail free option as well. It's also good to remember that you might want different abilities for different stages of the game. Those optimized end game builds you've clocked might look mighty impressive, but they're not necessarily what you should be aiming for while you're still grinding your way up the levels. But don't fret too much about making the wrong choices because your abilities can always be refunded. It will cost you some gold with the price increasing as you gain access to more abilities, but it means that you're never totally locked into your choices. Plus, it's a great way to check out a wider variety of abilities if you're not sure what to focus on. One of the aforementioned priority quests will introduce you to the Alchemist, who can upgrade your health potion for you, something that comes in incredibly handy over the course of the game. However, the game firmly believes that you're big enough to look after your own potions now, so it won't give you any further reminders to keep upgrading. So I'll give it to you now. Be sure to swing by and check in with the Alchemist from time to time to see if there's another improvement on offer. And while it's not exactly the most glamorous part of the game, foraging is absolutely vital to potion making. So be sure to grab some berries whenever you get the opportunity. Then you can go back to fighting your demons and stuff. 
Lilith herself might be the last person you want to bump into while you're wandering Diablo 4's world, but her altars are another matter altogether. Altars of Lilith will provide you with permanent stat boosts. Admittedly, it's only a small increase, but you'll find altars dotted all around the map, so all those little boosts can soon start to add up quite nicely. And the best part is that it's actually a server-wide upgrade, so it will apply to your current character as well as any others that you make, providing you with a jump start anytime you decide to whip out a new hero. Nothing can truly prepare you for the trials you'll face in Diablo 4, but these tips should help you get off to a decent start when June 6 rolls around. And if you've got any pro tips of your own, feel free to fire them into the comments below. See you in hell!